The entree has been served in round 14 of the Suncorp Super Netball, and now we are into the main meals, a buffet of mouth-watering matches to round out the regular season right here on Fox Netball. The Thunderbirds' finals hopes go on the line. Only victory will do if they want to break a drought stretching back to 2013. While their opponents, the West Coast Fever, are eager to head into the playoff matches with a win. Now let's have a look at the Woolies team cards. The huge news for the Fever is Jess Anstis is back from a foot injury. Stacey francis Bayman will drop to the bench for the Thunderbirds. An unchanged starting seven, but Matilda Garrett is out with injury training partner Molly Watson comes into the 10. What do you make of that, Sam Pullman? Well, the matchup that I'm most excited about is Fowler against Sterling. They are number one and two for Nissan net points of this season, but it's their units around them that excite me most. So the Fever attack end, best in the league against the Thunderbirds defense end, best in the league. So huge matchup down that end, Ben. There is so much to look forward to about this contest. The Thunderbirds looking for their sixth win of the season, which would actually be their best season since 2013. So you can see the improvement for them under Tanya Ops in her fourth season in charge. For the Fever, what a first campaign it has been for Dan Ryan. Former Thunderbirds head coach in charge of the team from the West. And he wants to guide them into the finals with a win. So the Thunderbird season goes on the line against the finals bound West Coast Fever. And it is the home team with the first centre pass. Simmons lobbing over the top to Fowler. And now Teague Neal. And Janil Fowler gets the momentum flowing early for the West Coast. Something they do quite a lot, give away some penalties, and there's one straight away, given away by the Fever. And the Thunderbirds taking advantage, locking us up here. Fowler strong, but that is brilliant work from Wilson, and this is what we are going to watch unfold today. This battle between the best attack in the competition and the best defense. Well, what a great start from Wilson. I was about to jump in and say that it was nice how both teams had settled in, but you're right, this combination between Sterling and Wilson is the most exciting defense end in the competition. The fact that they've got ball on hand early is a really great start for them. But I was so gutted last week, Sterling and Wilson, they got so many games and the Thunderbirds weren't able to turn it into goals at the other end. And we spoke a lot about standing up in moments in that last final minutes of that game. So Thunderbirds would have reflected on that this week and make the most of these opportunities, learn the lesson from last week and come out with confidence and execute that in moments in this game. So that is going to be the concern for the Thunderbirds. Once again, throwing it away. And it's what crippled them in the fourth quarter. Good balance there from Courtney Bruce. Well, and very lucky. I thought that was an offside. But the umpires are also nervous going into this game. So we'll let that one slide. Glasgow. So she'll get another opportunity. And from close range, brings us back to two apiece. So as we touched on, Adelaide Thunderbirds, five wins already this season, five last season. But haven't won six since they won 12 back in 2013. So it, we know it's been a real barren run for the Thunderbirds. Win this one, and they give themselves a shot at the knockout matches of the Fever. Put under a little bit of pressure in these opening few minutes. They are back in front now. Taylor Williams. And here is Potgeeter. Potgeeter reels it in. This is 
a rivalry that has been dominated slightly by the fever here in Perth, 7-6. And back to three apiece with Tipper Dwan. Let's go sideline with Nat Medhurst. They're just looking at the Thunderbirds defense of this of the fever um fever center pass is that they're pushing them out quite wide which works really to advantage of these thunderbird defenders we know they like to have a crack at the ball so by forcing them wide it's allowing them to come out and have a really good look at those intercepts which we've already seen so for fever particularly alice take and glasgow they really need to punch through the middle of that to then suck them in and then open up the space for them so that they can utilize it into the shooters thanks nat Ball just lobbing it and Potgita so she's got her confidence flowing after a, a jittery final quarter last week against the Vixens she'll be wanting to improve from that and starting well here in Perth you're right she'll need a really solid game but it's the work and the unit work around her I really am enjoying gorgeous and the creative play that she brings at wing attack Taylor Davies sorry Taylor Williams Beautiful vision there. This is the confidence that we want to see from the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Taylor was costly last week in terms of her turnovers, so she nicely needs to settle into this game. And this is an exciting attack end for the Thunderbirds. Centre obstruction. Beside her centre. Let's go. Confident. And we get to see her shooting there from mid-range. No doubt she'll be after a few more. Suncorp super shots. She's got the best accuracy for any player this season who has taken more than 20 Suncorp super shots. Gorgeous. And Potgeet had just got the fingers up. She needs to back herself in there and shoot that rather than continue to play it around. They've found it, but just back herself in because she can shoot yes. from that range. Good start this from the Thunderbirds from the attacking end. They are going. Goal for goal with the West Coast Fever. And it was always going to be fascinating, Sam, to see how this one played out. The Thunderbirds, we know the worst attacking team, best defence. The Fever, best attack, second worst defence. It creates a really exciting matchup and all about who can, like Shani Layton said in pre-game, about who can settle first and just start chipping away. You don't want to, you know, create too many errors, just continue to build the pressure. And I've enjoyed that... Huge call yes. there, Pot, Pot Gita get called for an offensive. So the rate that I'm really, you know, confident with Fever about is they're very good at their game to goal rate. So they're second in the league. So what that means is they can get the ball, but they'll score off it, just like Glasgow finishes off. Well, they're so efficient, aren't they? From that game to goal, centre pass to goal rate. Here's another look at centre pass to goal rate, Simmons. And Ari Yang fires it through to Teague Neal. We'll get the penalty. And now, as quickly as that, it's a three-goal advantage for the West Coast Fever. And Janiel Fowler just keeps racking up goals. They were able to do a decent job last week on Kamwenda, the Thunderbirds defence. But they're finding it a little difficult today against Fowler. Simmons and Glasgow again. Well, Fowler and Sterling flings it back. So this is where Janiel Fowler and the West Coast Fever have been so good as well this year from the rebounds. If they miss, they almost always get the rebound. And the ball over the baseline. So that is a massive let off for the Thunderbirds. Have a look at this Harvey Norman replay. They both match each yep. other in terms of height, but look at the elevation from Sterling. That's exactly what she needs to do. If there's a miss there, she needs to get up. Wilson! And then Fowler. Plenty of hand on ball there, Sam, from Wilson and Fowler. And Glasgow just calms it all down for a moment. Well, and have a look at the height difference. It just shows how good her vertical jump is from Wilson, that she can get up that high and get pressure on ball this early. Anya Opst a bit concerned, so she has called this HCF tactical timeout. Try and listen in to hear what the Thunderbirds coach has to say.
We just can't hear Tanya at the moment. We're going to tune in now. Diagonal there. And if everyone's this way, we can't be able to swing it. Right. So you need to present that. Um, just uh, keep penetrating through the, the middle channel there. And, and Stunts is working. A little bit late, a little bit later. Yeah? Yeah? And I think... The message there from Adelaide Thunderbirds head coach Tanya Ops, that first HCF tactical time out of the match. She identified that wall that we we learnt about on Centre Circle on Thursday night that FIBA putting on and making sure that she wants someone to drive through the middle. Let's go and hear what Dan Ryan had to say in the West Coast FIBA timeout. Uh, Nat, what was the message? Yeah, Dan Ryan spent a lot of time talking to his attack and making sure that they were or making them make sure they were making good decisions. Um, so doing those extra passes if they needed to. It also asked of Sasha Glasgow to make sure that she was really driving in hard into that circle and making the defenders accountable and obviously making smart decisions when they're putting those balls up in the air, which is um, what the Thunderbirds defenders are loving. Thanks, Nat. So just as Nat was talking there, we see the Thunderbirds unable to convert again and look at the speed down the court so direct from Simmons to Glasgow now Teague Neal now being forced to work though Glasgow having to take a little bit more of the volume now we're seeing so we saw that last week when the Thunderbirds took on the Vixens just the disparity in volume was a lot closer between Kamwenda and Austin. We're seeing it today for the fever between Glasgow and Fowler. Well, you're right. That's exactly what they need to do. They're double defending Fowler at the moment. So Sasha Glasgow needs to go and say, I can shoot the volume and you need to worry about me too. So Potkita, successful. Let's go back to Nat. Yeah, just with the Thunderbirds attack line, they're playing very much along the baseline. It's making, obviously, the balls go quite up in the air, which is allowing Bruce and, Sa and Ariang to actually have a crack at them. So these mid-quarters for the Thunderbirds need to work really hard on changing their position, working their angles, even if it means resetting it back to the transverse line to come in from a different way. Because when it just keeps getting played from one side of the court to the other, it makes it difficult for the shooters um, and it's a, an area that the defenders love to be able to play with. Sterling, that's massive again. They need more of that if they are to claw their way back. And they're going to need efficiency here from Potgita and Tipper Dwan. And that is exactly what they need from their South African goal shooter. Have a look at this Harvey Norman replay. Beautiful elevation and deflection onto the ball and gain that possession. That is what she's so good at. And FIBA really need to start identifying where that space is that they need to find Fowler, given that Sterling matches up so well with height and elevation in that circle. So the power five now, you can see the run of goals for the Thunderbirds. Three on the stretch. And Sterling and Simmons come together. It was an awkward tumble for Verity Simmons. So they've brought it back to just two goals. The Adelaide Thunderbirds. Got the mop out. Gives us a chance just to chat about that centre pass to goal rate. So Sam was touching on this before. The West Coast Fever best in the comp. Thunderbirds the worst as we see this collision. Have a look at this Harvey Norman replay. The umpire actually just pulled Sterling aside to give her the warning of going, that is too late. So she just needs the ideas right, needs to change up her angle. So the Thunderbirds behind by three. We know they're not that keen on the Suncorp super shot. Gorgeous. Williams got there. Tipper Dwan's going to take the first opportunity. It wasn't online, but all importantly, they get the offensive rebound. 
And Potgater brings us back to two, the difference. Pignil, hand in from Williams, but it's out off the Thunderbird center. Throw in for Simmons. Have a look at how the Thunderbirds defenders are standing up, setting up, sorry. Sla Sasha Glasgow was out of the circle there. No one's on her. So they're really playing that split circle and working with each other because they're paying attention to how much damage Fowler can do. Potgater. Thought about going direct to Tipper Dwan, instead to Horges and Dwan. Right in front here, Tipper Dwan. And she's going to take on the Sun Corp super shot, and it drains for Tipper Dwan. Massive for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Three minutes remaining in this first quarter, and they're back within one. Goal defense, stay out of play. Simmons straight to Glasgow. She is a specialist from the Sun Corp super shot range, and she drains once again. 46 for the season for Sasha Glasgow, she closing is, in on a half century. She is third in the league, and that's exactly what I mean about the structure of the Thunderbirds defense working together on Fowler, but that's how much damage she can do if she's left by herself. Bob Gita, Williams, and Tipper Dwan, and Potkita, maybe not expecting that pass. She tracked it down. Borges. It's just for one. Well, and he's Potkita. So they're sticking with the West Coast Fever at the moment. We know they're going to have to score a lot of goals today, the Adelaide Thunderbirds, if they are going to keep with the best attacking team in the competition, such as the strength of Janiel Fowler. Fever throw in, so that is not what the Thunderbirds needed. 90 seconds from quarter time. A chance to stretch their advantage now, the West Coast Fever. Thunderbirds need to continue to stay in play. They are already in this game 24 penalties. Sorry, that last one, 25. They can't be standing out of play. You release a lot of pressure. So they need to tidy that up in this second quarter. And what is more of an issue is Sasha Glasgow with another Suncorp super shot. Just three away from 50 for the season. Dan Ryan's up and about. So that may help. And a petty. Sterling, here's Wilson. They would love a Suncorp super shot here. What do they do though? Direct to Pot Peter, so it'll just be the one. High percentage option. And they've got the next centre pass, so a chance for them to close this gap to within two. Pot Peter thought about it, just the one. 20 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Simmons and Anstis, of course, Jess Anstis back from that foot injury. Now this is huge. Sasha Glasgow to bridge it back out to five. The former Thunderbird right on quarter time. And at quarter time, it is the West Coast Fever who lead it by five against the Thunderbirds who are looking to keep their season alive. We'll be back after the break with the second quarter. Welcome back to RAC Arena. Fever with a five goal lead over Adelaide Thunderbirds. Listening in to the Thunderbirds, Tanya Obbs asking for her attackers to really make sure that they're punching through that zone that the Fever defenders are setting up. Also, their smart decisions with those long balls going into Pop Gita. 
in, de in defence, they're wanting to really isolate Sasha Glasgow when, they ha when she has the ball up high and making sure that their defenders are continuing to really work their feet and staying in front to force those high balls over. Sam, what did you hear from Fever? Thanks, Nat. I absolutely love that because Fever spent the entire time speaking about the opposite. So about that wall on the centre pass defensively for Fever, being really aggressive, making sure that the Thunderbirds use the back door pass. And then in terms of going into the circle to Fowler, that feed must come from circle edge. Origin Energy bringing you quarter time there. The West Coast Fever leading by five. And we saw, of course, the back door, the wall, featured in Upshot this week during centre circle. If you missed that with Laura Geitz, you can check it out on KO Sports. Do not miss it. It was a fascinating insight. So the Adelaide Thunderbirds, they got themselves back within three, but then Sasha Glasgow, the former Thunderbird, she was able to push it back to five right on the stroke of quarter time. So first centre pass. In the second quarter with Taylor Williams. Hannah Petty, and now Tipper Dwan. Or just making herself available, and then to Potgita. How's the efficiency straight away here from West Coast Fever? Look at this, Sasha Glasgow shaping up from range, and then Fowler spilt it. That's a great win from the Thunderbirds defenders. Those are the little pressure and the wins that come your way. They've done a really good job in this first, as I say, good job, and Bruce gets a touch herself. But they've done a really good job down that end so far. I'm just looking at the stats for West Coast Fever this year as Dawn finds Hot Gita. So there'll be a couple of goals on the run to start this second quarter, but Bruce getting a deflection in there. Just looking at why the West Coast defence may not be right up there with the Vixens who are above them on the table. You can see what it means this match. The Thunderbirds, they win. And if they do it well enough, they can move their way into that top four and push out the Magpies, who are, of course, playing against the Vixens tomorrow. And then straight after this one, the Firebirds and the Swifts. <laughs> what a match that is. Winner has a chance of playing finals. Loser is gone. Glasgow. And it drops for Wilson. Another rebound the way of the Thunderbirds. They are on fire to start this second quarter. And just the point I was trying to touch on there, Sam, about the fever and maybe where their issues are defensively. I know everyone's got a theory, but just based on the cold hard stats, they get a lot of deflections but turning them into games, they don't always do that. And we saw that previously from Bruce. This is a turnover, though, for Courtney Bruce. Deflections do start building that pressure to get gains, but you're right, compared to other teams, I think Jess Anster's coming back into this line provides a bit more defensive pressure in front of them. But Courtney Bruce is their main defender in terms of hands-on ball, and she's been quite quiet in this game, yet to have an intercept to her name. How about the tangle up there from the Jamaican teammates? Those three. Well, you would expect to see them all in Birmingham. Have a look at the contest in this rebound. <laughs> and Nelly domino effect. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> On the Harvey Norman replay. Anna Petty firing it to Latanya Wilson and Taylor Williams. Or just floating it to Williams. Potkita making herself available in They're front of... They're finding her really nicely. Bingo. That's a good vision and feed. I think Potkita's doing a really good job on Bruce so far. She needs to keep holding strong so that it's very clear for her attackers where they want to feed the ball. Taylor Williams so close with that intercept. Contact called there. Taylor Williams, so Teague Neal and Glasgow just loves it from mid-range. This time it doesn't drop, so she's just having some issues is Sasha Glasgow, who grew up in Kadena in South Australia, flung back by Bruce straight to Dwan. And Wilson, that was a risky pass, and it is going to be Glasgow's ball. 
She's won it for her team, Jess her. Anstis. Got a fan beside her. With the ball in her hands. So let's go sideline with Nat Medhurst. It's been really impressive looking at the Thunderbirds defenders and their defence over the shot in the first stages of this second quarter. We saw the Fever Shooters getting quite a good look as Glasgow lines up here and um, nails that one. But prior to that, they've been missing a few. And the Thunderbirds defenders have just been mixing up their defence over the shot. I think getting a hand up a lot earlier is putting particularly Glasgow off her shot. So that's going to be a big one for them to keep doing in this second yeah, quarter to give them opportunities on those defensive rebounds. Thanks, Nat. Yeah, it always is a bit hard when you've got that kind of vertical jump going up in front of you. You see the height that Wilson and Sterling get. You can see Sterling up there again. They're Fowler just able to... in everything, aren't they? And that's what this is about. It's about building that pressure and that doubt. Another miss, another rebound from the Adelaide Thunderbirds. They need to make sure that they settle. Options to the ball, make good choices and make sure they convert. Keita, St. Williams. Got offensive obstruction. And Chipper Dwan, it's back to one. They are clawing their way back. So you can see goals from turnovers. Usually you'd expect the Thunderbirds to lead that stat, but it is the Fever. That is a risky pass. Fortunately, though, Bruce was unable to bring it under her control. Williams. That's fortunate as well. Center contact. Contact from Simmons. So this to bring us back level. The Fever won the first quarter by five. The Thunderbirds oh lead the second at the moment by five, and it's 22 apiece. Harry Yang, touch in from Dwan. Simmons, Teague Neal, Fowler. Look at the two-team effort. Don't you love it? She got that ball, pushed Wilson out of the way to go, I've got this one. But the pressure from the Adelaide Thunderbirds, it does start from out the front of you. So like, we can't give all the credit to those two in the air, but they're doing an amazing job at just causing pressure and getting hands on ball. Well, that double-team effort just jamming Fowler every time. She must be really hating life at the moment, Janelle Fowler. And She's their finding things difficult. Yeah, she is. And their elevation, that's what they're good at. So, FIBA need to... The last four goals have gone to the Adelaide Thunderbirds. They need to make sure they convert this one. I feel like they're doing a really good job being calm. As I say that, execution, which is what we know lets them down. So they just need to make sure they continue to do their options. The defensive pressure is there. Yeah, it was right on cue there, Sam. It's been the issue constantly this season for the Thunderbirds. They get themselves into a good position. They just can't ram home the advantage. They open the door now for the Fever. We'll have the next centre pass if they can convert here. And a team like FIFA, they're the best attacking, the volume that they can do. So when you get opportunities in the game, you have to score off it. You, they're not going to come all the time in 60 minutes, so you need to make sure you can do it. Ariang, Teague Neal, arm in from Sterling, collected by Teague Neal. Glasgow. Sasha Glasgow has found her range again in this second quarter. Just in the nick of time as well. As the power five is approaching. Williams, gorgeous. Now Tipper Dwan. Courtney Bruce just keeping herself in between the ball and also Potgeeter and then injecting herself, flying through and taking the intercept. Ariang. Almost opened the door there as Petty flying through. And again, one back for the Thunderbirds. And it's Glasgow again. And it is a HCF tactical timeout called by Tanya Ox just as the momentum started to move towards the team in green. You can see. They're not actually having a chat to their coach at the moment, the Thunderbirds. 
They're going to head over now, and we're going to have a listen in to Tanya Ops in this HCF tactical timeout. Lenny's got the hold on Courtney. I reckon fake it, because you know, we're passing it low. Fake it so Courtney comes, and then we just put a little high on the ball. You know, those ones where we are, we're getting in behind, then we're getting it over their defence, and we get a 1v1, so we can draw, and then it's... Yeah, but we want it like Courtney's waiting for that one to come around, so we can fake that one, yeah? So I reckon when it's on like that third second, you probably want to reset. You might want to fake it earlier to then draw her out to go in. Yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Good work, take the time. Come on, come on, come on. So there's Tanya Ops with the HCF tactical timeout. Let's hear what Dan Ryan had to say with Nat Medhurst. Yeah, Dan went, went straight up to Sasha Glasgow and Janelle Fowler, asking them, particularly with Glasgow, getting into that circle, really backing herself in, particularly on this shot, as we touched on before. She has been a little bit shaky in this second quarter. And with Fowler, just her positioning on the hold, we've seen the Thunderbirds defenders starting to get a bit more ball on it. So making sure she's holding into the right space and always being proactive in her positioning. Thanks, Nat. Yeah, isn't it fascinating? Janiel Fowler with 11 goals. Glasgow including the Super Chops with 14. You don't often see that. Fowler having less goals overall, including the Super Chop, than Glasgow. And that goes into the strategic defensive play that Sterling and Wilson are playing down that end. And it's really smart because their strength is the ability to get hands on ball and their elevation. So it makes sense. Sasha Glasgow needs to make them more accountable by taking those drives and being confident in her shot. Centre obstruction. Both out. Fun is not out, keeper. So Tipper Dwan just settling, trying to settle. Well, Potkater a little bit unhappy with the umpiring, but gee whiz, she missed the rim as well, Tipper Dwan. And these issues continue to haunt Adelaide. That's brilliant from Hannah Petty, but the penalty given away. The home fans not happy. The replay call. Going against Hannah Petty and then not giving the ball back straight away. Glasgow, this is not within power five time, but it may well be now. It'll just be Fowler from right next to the post. So back out in front by four. with another centre pass. So Courtney Bruce leading those Nissan net points. No surprise that Sterling up there as well. But Taylor Williams busy in the centre for um, the Thunderbirds. And Glasgow cannot make it drop. So she just isn't quite nailing those shots like she was in the first quarter. You're right. She just needs to keep doing the work. And in this game, you don't have to shoot those twos if you're not feeling it. Go back to doing the work, get closer to the post, and keep that scoreboard pressure that Dan Ryan, their coach, often talks about. Surprising, isn't it? Because they're ahead by four. And now they just open the door for the Thunderbirds, who will go up by one here. Let's go sideline with Nat. Yeah, just looking at the Thunderbirds in attack, and particularly around the transverse line, they are getting a little bit stuck, so they just need to make sure that they've got that real balance in their leads. And we're seeing Bruce coming out hunting a little bit more, so they need to really have someone coming to the ball, shift her, oh, as there's a t t absolute gimme there, but shift her and really open up that space so that they're not getting tunnel vision, um, so that they're playing into her hands. And that, just as you were touching on there, Tipper Dwan retreating and just throwing the ball away. They need to use their fakes as well. If Courtney Bruce is going to come out and have a fly, use the fake, then it will open up because she's then got to make a decision what she's going for. Time in possession. Absolutely level. Big play that time from Wilson. 
gorgeous. Tipitwan, hot geeter. Was in that super shot range, but she doesn't take too many of those. Williams, hot geeter. Just what the Thunderbirds needed. So they've threatened to increase their advantage to West Coast Fever, but they too just can't ram it home. Have a look at this Harvey Norman replay. Again, I feel like we need to put a whole reel together of Sterling getting up and having a go. So problem for Sasha Glasgow. She is heading off the court. Umpire's checking here for blood, so I'd say she's gone off for that ruling. Well, and the medical staff will all look at uh, patching that up and, and getting her back out in court. Well, that is massive. Emma Kosh out there now. The 10th of the season, this from super shot range. But Tanya Wilson getting up in the way. Emma Kosh has been good for them. She's been confident and making that goal defense accountable. So this injection, while it was forced, I think can be a good one because we've often spoken about keeping Wilson accountable. I think she can do that. So the Thunderbirds with just over a couple of minutes remaining in this first half. Geeta coming forward. Tipperdwan looping it to the South African returns it to Tipperdwan. Look to settle. Just going up in once. Let's go for a comment to the sideline with Nat. Uh, what was interesting just then is that Taylor Williams was actually the one that pointed out to the umpire about the blood rule on Sasha Glasgow and got her sent off court. So they'll want to make sure that they're utilising the time that she is off here. We do know Emma Kosh is a beautiful two-point shot as well. I'd just like to see from Thunderbird shooter, Lamise Pockett is starting just not too yes. high, but a little bit higher. We are seeing her sometimes getting caught along that base as the umpires are just checking the center pass here um, and making sure that she stays nice and calm. We've seen her get quite frustrated at the umpire and that's something that Courtney Bruce would certainly be well aware of. Yeah, we've seen that happen with this season when Potkita gets frustrated, it really can hinder her. So keeping herself calm from that perspective right there, but we did see moments ago she was getting frustrated with that decision. Fowler! And have a look at those top score goals. Potkita's leading that to Fowler, which is something we don't often talk about, but really promising that Potkita is putting up the volume that we need to. But you're right, someone that's going to niggle you and annoy you the entire game is Courtney Bruce. So you don't need to give that to her. Yeah. Stay calm. Potgate is doing a really good job. And you would come into this match expecting it, wouldn't you, as Lanise Potgate coming up against the Diamonds goalkeeper. It's a good take from Simmons because she didn't look to be expecting it. Fowler for a Suncorp super shot. She looks to get the rebound, she does. Emma Kosh, just a couple of super shots this season. And a Couldn't sneaky little lift from Sterling and Wilson. Love that she pulled her up to get a little bit more height. But Adelaide Thunderbirds, only two seconds left on the clock. Still enough time to place that ball. Well, what a first half that is. The Adelaide Thunderbirds keeping their season alive. They are behind by just two goals at half time. It is a tough road trip to RAC Arena, but Tanya Ops team, they are still a real chance of getting the four competition points that would ensure they can still play in the finals. The West Coast Fever fans will be fairly happy with what they've seen, but they'll want to try and improve in that second half, especially from an attacking end. It's the final round of the Suncorp Super Netball, and that means it's the last chance for the Adelaide Thunderbirds if they want to play finals. Currently, they sit sixth on the table, a win, and they are into the top four for the moment. For the West Coast Fever, they want to head into the playoffs on a high. We've got Thunderbirds coach Tanya Ops, who joins us now here on Fox Netball. Tanya, what was your key takeaway from that first half? Oh, look, I thought we um, were really 
controlling sort of uh, in the in the out goal circle, and I think um, we're also getting enough ball to, to score. And, and winning that second quarter gave us a, a lot of confidence heading into the second half. Tanya, a really positive first half. How do you, the, how does the team focus and continue to make sure that you finish this game off in the second yeah. half? It's just a matter of revisiting that game plan. I don't know that we need to make too many adjustments, in all honesty. It's just about now the execution, clean execution and sticking to it to the best of our ability. Has execution been something that you've focused on this week? Uh, you've never had a problem with gaining ball, um, but just that, you know, uh, gain to goal rate, has that been a focus? I think it's it's been a focus probably for us for the majority of the year and um, you know we're going to keep uh, finding new ways to get there and, and, and putting them into play now when, when the pretty part is and that's during the game. Tanya, good luck for the rest of this one. Thank you. Thunderbirds coach Tanya Opst in her fourth season in charge and she's won five matches the last two seasons. It's five again this year if they win a six that will be their best season since 2013 when they last made the finals, when they won the Premiership. So they gave away the ball, they've got it back now. It's been a, an intriguing start to this third quarter. Tipper Dwan, shaping up from range. Interesting to see the change that Fever have made in this sec uh, third quarter. Sorry, we can see Stacey Francis Bateman come onto that goal defence position, which has shifted Sunday Ariane out to wing defence and then moved Jess Ansis back into the centre position, removing uh, Verity Simmons from the court. So you can see that Dan Ryan isn't happy with that first half and is really looking for some changes in this third quarter. And the fabulous news there is it is her 100th match in the National League, so that's across the ANZ Championship and also the Suncorp Super Netball. So congratulations to Stacey Francis Bayman, the English international who has been named in that squad for the Commonwealth Games later on this year. As they look to defend the gold medal, they of course stunningly won on the Gold Coast back in 2018. Potkita, so they're rolling along nicely both sides to start this third quarter. Let's go to Nat Medhurst for a comment. A player I would really Go like to see se step up here is Tipper Dwan from the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Coming into this uh, third quarter, she was at minus 9.5, missing net, point, net points. She's now shot five from seven, so she really needs to get herself into this game, take a bit of pressure off Pop Gita, work her angles, get some ball, her hands on the ball, and really make use of this. This Stacey Francis Spayman has come in. She's a bit colder. So that's something Dwan can really utilise um, in her favour. And back herself on the shot, she's looking a little bit tentative as well. So she really needs to get her confidence up and, and um, really start delivering for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, thanks, Nat. Tipper Dwan, the new recruit for the Thunderbirds at the start of the season from the Firebirds. Not contracted for next season at the moment. So are oh, those players looking to impress? That's a misguided pass. So it's a sloppy start this to the third quarter from the Fever. We saw Francis Bayman and also the likes of Courtney Bruce get in each other's way just a moment ago. And you can just see maybe that combination. They haven't played a whole lot together this season. Bruce and Ariang, the preferred goalkeeper, goal defence combo. But again, the Thunderbirds just gift them back possession. So that's what they're playing for, the Thunderbirds. A spot in the top four. They have a better percentage than the Magpies. So if they win this, they are into the top four. And then they will cross their fingers, they'll cross their toes, they'll cross everything. The Adelaide Thunderbirds to see if they can get themselves there to play the Giants in Sydney next week. The Fever. That's an important touch. Into the arms of Teague Neal, and now Fowler. Keeper. And it's a continuation of the theme from the first half. Just Wilson and Sterling jamming in there on Fowler, the three Jamaicans. It is such an intriguing battle to watch. The best defence from the Thunderbirds against the best attack, the West Coast Fever. Hot Gita. the rebound does she no 
She flung it back. And the shooting jitters strike again for the Thunderbirds. Glasgow back on the court for this third quarter after having to go off with the blood rule. Late in the second. Goalkeeper returned the ball. Shamira Sterling into the naughty corner. Not for the first time today. To get warned in that first half. Goal attack obstruction. Francis Bayman and then on to Teague Neal, the Nansters. Step back into the one keeper. Just stretching it to four goals, Janelle Fowler. She's starting to get a little more joy, isn't she, in this third quarter. And Potgita gives away possession. They started this third quarter so well. And it's all coming apart now for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. It's just the little things in this game. You need to make sure you play on. The umpires, you know, call the play. Sometimes there's replays that aren't called. Other times they are. You've just got to play on because this is the buffer that Fever have now done in the last little run. This is how dominant that they can be. So a HCF tactical timeout is on the way. Tanya Opst again. Fever is going to have a chat to her team. a pep talk from Hannah Petty involved there. Let's hear what Dan Ryan had to say with Nat Medhurst. Dan Ryan was short and sharp, straight to the point, making sure that his team can maintain their discipline, smart shot, shot selection, and that they've got more than one lead to the ball. That's basically exactly what he said, and he'll want his team to continue to deliver. Huge moment from Hannah Petty in their huddle. Was really direct with the players in terms of let's lift, we can control this, and we're playing for our pink family. Bring it back in to remind them what they're playing from. And really direct from Tanya to say basic mistakes is what we have control over. And that's what we've been talking about in this game. The basic mistakes that are letting them down and they have control over it. Look at the last 10 goals, really dominant. The last five from FIBA. That's the run that they've had. Thunderbirds need to chip away and get this, this lead back in control. Well, they really had to score, and they have to score from this phase. And we spoke about it first quarter, as Courtney Bruce just looks like she ran into to that screen, but she's tough, she'll keep playing. You know, we spoke about in that first quarter how dominant Potgeeter was and how calm she was. That's another win for Fever and Courtney Bruce. I feel like now that matchup has changed and Courtney Bruce is niggling and getting on top of Potgeeter. Nat Medhorst, you've been keeping an eye on the Fever's attacking end. I have, and really impressed with the Fever mid-court. And if Dan wanted to put a challenge out to his players, he certainly put one out to Jess Ann. So she hasn't played since round seven. Um, back in after a long time off with a foot injury. And the way she's come into this team, she is sucking in the big ones when she wasn't 
wing defence has now thrown her into centre. And she brings with her game a real different style of play compared to Verity Simmons. She's a lot more, I guess, measured and controlled. And the way in which it's working with Alice Teague on the wing is really beautiful. They're playing the ball nicely. They're not rushing the ball too often. And they've got beautiful placement into their feeders. So it's allowing them, particularly in this third quarter, to gain a lot of momentum and to stretch this lead out. Well, there is nothing like match minutes to get yourself up to full fitness, and that certainly is going to help Jess answer. So you can see Fowler and Potgeter at 24 apiece. That was a little more lopsided earlier in the match. Fowler's got herself going. There's another turnover. The Thunderbirds are seemingly falling apart in this third quarter. The Fever are getting more hand on ball and they're finding Fowler. The change in that centre court is what's doing that. Really impressed by Jess Ansis. Wilson with another intercept. That placement not right there. Well, the defence end again, consistently doing the job for the Thunderbirds. But this is their problem again. Taylor Williams' pass just lobs straight into the breadbasket of Sunday Ariane. And Tanya's right, they're controllable mistakes. So I think Fever have come into this game, but they're a lot from what Thunderbirds are doing to themselves. Have a look at your options, give the ball, place that ball well, and have multiple moves. Don't just let a go ball go hoping that it'll get there. Well, shooting accuracy, the Thunderbirds leading in that department, but it's getting the ball there. Crippling them. And Fowler, she just keeps grinding away at the other end, just increasing the margin. Out by 10 now, they are winning this third quarter by eight. Hot Gita. Williams has passed again. Just lacking confidence, isn't she? The Thunderbird centre at the moment. That's another turnover. And Sterling, she gets the intercept back for the Thunderbirds. But can they do something with it this time, Adelaide? They just have to. And you can see Nankervell getting ready to come out. So we'll see that change. It's not far away. Porges to Potgita. And here it comes. So Williams is done. You can see she's really struggling at the moment. So what kind of impact now can Maisie Nankovell have on this match? She didn't get any court time last week against the Vixens. This is her chance, the former Adelaide Pro in the AFLW. She needs to enter this game and be controlled and calm. So defensively work really hard one-on-one -on -one to create pressure and be really dynamic in her movements in centre, get the ball on the edge of the circle, see the space and give it. So she sat on the bench for half a game in netball. She's seen what's happening. She just needs to give that ball, see where the space is and be confident. Georgie Horges needs this Suncorp super shot. The rebound falls for Pot Gita. The drops in the one. Let's go to Nat. Uh, Fever have just called a timeout, so we'll go in and listen to what they've got to say and then come back. Dan Ryan, he regularly does this just before or just inside the Power Five. He loves a chat about their tactics. Defensively, we're now starting to get our moments more and more. Okay, so all seven of you on the same page at the same time and capitalise in those moments. All right, everyone clear with me? Okay, so coming into three minute charge, aggressive on our flood, aggressive on our flood. All right, let's use our strategy in our back here and let's not allow Georgie any two point shots. All right, so you two or you two work on Georgie. All right, really important. Discipline in attack here. All right, so when we do get the moments, our responsibility, circle edge, placement into the shooters. All right, so lock in for it. All right, let's go. So doesn't want any two-point shots from Georgie Hoare, just as Dan Ryan. That's the message from him. Nat, what did you hear from the Thunderbirds? From the Thunderbirds, Tanya Odds just asking around the holding and the placement of the ball in this attack line. And that's what I wanted to touch on before. Whilst they're doing that, to be honest, 
this attack line for the Adelaide Thunderbirds need to toughen up. They are know that they're going to get pushed around and at the moment they're getting frustrated. They're too easily getting pushed off the ball, allowing the players to come through. So they need to hold their position. I've got a, just over a quarter to really turn this game around if they want to be in finals. And as I said, they need to get um, a little bit angry out there and really, really make sure they hold their position strongly and demand that ball. So another $100 to the Confident Girls Foundation. Sasha Glasgow nailing a Suncorp super shot. Potgita. With an easier opportunity with Bruce forced to stand aside. It's still 10 though, the difference. Have a look at this Harvey Norman replay. The, that's what she's good at. Third in the league for Suncorp super shots. And behind two legends in that department in Housby and Harton. Well, if the super shot was in the international game, you sent Sasha Glasgow would probably be in the diamond side based on her quality this season in that department. So, the Thunderbirds behind by nine. McDonald is out there as well. Horges quickly to McDonald. Bruce slow to get up. Horges with a Suncorp super shot just when the Thunderbirds needed one. It's back to seven, the difference. Can they get some momentum flowing their way? Contact called, so Anstis on to Teague Neal. Airily to Fowler. And that's all the Fever are going to do, just keep ticking it over. They really have to go up in twos, though, the visitors. Bruce leading from a defensive perspective. Dan Ryan would have to be really happy with this performance from the West Coast Fever. And no surprise that the Nissan Net Point match leaders are in Bruce, Sterling and Wilson. Going into the, this game, they are top in the league in terms of intercepts, games, deflections and rebounds. So they are performing. It's the game of the attack ends, delivering off that possession, the gains that the defence end are getting for their team. Wing. Nankavell. McDonald. Pontita returning it to McDonald. And now Horges trying to get herself in position for a super shot. She does ex exactly that. Georgie Horges and bounces off and away. And the fever are off, but they get it back through McDonald. And unfortunately for the Thunderbirds. And it's going to be the Fever's ball through Sunday Ariang. Courtney Bruce seeing Francis Bayman. Glasgow to Fowler. How often do we hear that? Sasha Glasgow assisting Janelle Fowler, and they have another centre pass to Fever. Wow, the Fever attack line have done a much better job in Sasha Glasgow keeping Wilson busy. So why that's important is that two defensive unit that was really shutting down Fowler at the start of the game isn't there. As we see the offensive contact come from Fowler. So two options from the Adelaide Thunderbirds. They need to score off this game. So much pressure on every pass in this match. So Jess yeah. Anstis called out. Nankavell. Contact ball to is in the one. In the one. Gorgeous. Just for the one for the Thunderbirds. Linking up with Potgita. But they're going to need more than that. They are going to need more than that here. It would reduce it to six if they can drain a super shot. Potgita happy just with one though. Uh, 20 seconds for the West Coast Fever to find something right before three-quarter time. And Sasha Glasgow getting in position for her 50th Suncorp super shot of the season. All net. How about that from Sasha Glasgow? 
And the West Coast Fever finishing the third quarter on fire. They lead it by nine, and they are rolling through to the finals in fine form at the moment. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after the break. It's a nine-goal lead to West Coast Fever here at RAC Arena. Listening into Tanya opposite the Adelaide Thunderbirds, she went up to Lanitz Potgita and really tried to calm her down. They need a big quarter from her in attack, wanting her attack line to really work together in their combinations and using those channels really smartly. And in defence, again, that footwork all around their positioning, making sure that they're in front to force the ball up and high so that they're able to go in for those intercepts. Sam, what did you get from Fever? I was listening in to Dan Ryan. He spent a lot of time with his defensive unit and was very happy with them, encouraging them to continue to build that pressure and have a fly at the ball. Now, if you love an inspirational message from him, he gave them the right to scrap your little hearts out. So anything they get, make sure they scrap and come up with that ball. And in attack, really make sure that you keep passing and cutting and really punch in attack. So a big last quarter from the Fever if they look at, you know, moving through to the finals. So that was quarter time brought to you by Origin Energy and the start that the Thunderbirds did not want to this fourth quarter. And that's exactly what Dan Ryan asked for. Scrap your heart out. Courtney Bruce getting the deflection, following it up and really making sure the pressure from the fever and the intensity is why they are sitting second on the ladder in St. Corps with Netball. And it touched on right what we were talking about earlier in the match in that the fever this season have got a lot of deflections but haven't turned those into games. Second worst in the competition at converting, converting deflections into games. And today, you can see they're right up there with the Thunderbirds, but Dan Ryan wants to see that improve. And you're right, when we talk about this season, how close every round's been, how close, and what is on the line for this round, everything matters. So every little touch of the ball, every gain in every quarter matters. It's never been so tight like this before, so they need to make sure the pressure they create, they come up with a game. So the Fever, they will not be displaced from second spot. They're going to play the Vixens next week in the major semi-final for the right to move into the grand final. Of course, if they win that match, the grand final will be here in Perth regardless whether they go about it the long way or the short way. So the Thunderbirds have everything to play for in this fourth quarter, behind by 10. It's a mountain to climb at the moment. But we know defensively they can get the ball. It's just being able to convert at the other end. And Janiel Fowler just do doing what she always does best. Racking up the goals. Nankovell and Potgita. McDonald. Jess Anstis gets a break. Verity Simmons out there in centre. Of course, Jess Anstis first match back since April after that foot issues kept her out for six matches. And not only will she take confidence out of this game, but also will Fever really smart in, you know, returning from injury, but getting her back in the game. This competition is so quick, so tight and physical. So I'm sure she'll be exhausted after this game but a lot of confidence for her and her team going into the semi next week. And Sasha Glasgow already with 50 Suncorp super shots. She's just as efficient from the one point zone as well. Borges, Mankavell, back and forward. And Georgie Horges gets things going for the Thunderbirds. Let's go down to the sideline with Nat. Yeah, just wanted to talk about Alice Teague now. I don't think we've really spoken much about her. 
this game and she's the type of player who just goes about her business but combines so beautifully with ever, whoever is around her out there on court. We've seen changes throughout that mid-court with her. She's sitting at 21 assists, 39 feeds and only four turnovers for someone who's been handling the ball quite a lot. So, you know, for her, the way as well which has changed her game from a goal attack to really fit into this wing attack position for her West Coast Fever is a real testament to her and I think her mentality of really um, developing herself as a player and so it's a, a big credit to her. Yeah, certainly massive decision by Dan Ryan at the start of the season and certainly has paid off. So the Thunderbirds just pouring back a few goals. Three on the fly after that miss moment to go from Glasgow. Sterling just trying to get a finger in to put off Fowler. But Janelle Fowler, she's just got better as this match has worn on. So the Thunderbirds captain, Hannah Petty. And now Nankovell looking long, seeing Potgita. Gorgeous. Returns it to Potgita. Contact on the Thunderbirds goal shooter. They are going to need more turnovers. The Adelaide Thunderbirds, can they get something here? Final 10 minutes. They should put on Glasgow and also Teague Neal. Simmons. Teague Neal. Foul up. Gets herself closer to the post. Gorgeous spied the space as Potkita presented well. And at the moment, it's really that third quarter which is proving the difference between these two. That will help for the Thunderbirds. Fever won that third quarter by seven goals. At that point, it was only two the difference at half time. Out to 10 now. They can reduce this if they are good enough. Good quick distribution. Horges to Potgita. They have the next centre pass. Tanya Ops team. They need to keep moving in attack and not waiting for somebody else to go. There's only always one option, so they are getting tired. It's opening up nicely inside the circle, but that work still needs to come in front. As Courtney Bruce tries to reject Georgie Horges' shot, she'll sink this one to close up the gap. So can they get another tip here? The Thunderbirds, Wilson got up and about. Sterling putting the pressure on, there was contact, Fowler drains again. The Green Army making plenty of noise. Gorgeous to Potgita. That's much better movement. You can see the impact that Georgie Hall just brings when she double plays herself. Now the pressure defensively can't just always rely on Wilson and Sterling. Yes, they are amazing in getting ball. The whole team needs to build that pressure so that Sterling and Wilson have their best opportunity to get ball back. And Glasgow does her job. Well, this, I was almost going to say, it was almost as efficient as we've seen from the Thunderbirds. Just as they were starting to look good, pass over the baseline. Well, and this has to be the frustration from their coaches and their season. They are in these matches. They can get ball back. Like As that. we see, Sterling come up with an intercept that she's so good at. But the frustration comes from not the ball they have, it's the ability to get down and convert it. And it's always the silly mistakes in crucial times that allow their opposition to go on a run and it's really hard to try and fight back. 
when a margin starts creeping away from you. Well, it's been an issue when the temperature has been turned up for the Thunderbirds. They've melted. This is their season on the line. Poor just gets it around the rim. It's eight. And we are heading towards the power five. So it is now or never for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Dan Ryan, he calls the HCF tactical timeout just to get his tactics sorted for the power five. Okay, we're gonna finish this game off with absolute intent, all seven of us and the bench included, all right? And the intent is the willingness to work the extra pass, take the extra drive, contest the extra ball, all right? So we're not having one option on the ball. Anytime we get it, we're circle edge, we're locking it down, we're securing it. Every time they've got the ball, we're looking for our opportunities, all right? So let's finish this game. All of us responsible. We are not there yet. We are not there yet. Let's go, come on. Let's go. So Dan Ryan, he wants the intensity on the court and also from the bench. Nat Medhurst, what did you hear from the Thunderbirds? Listening into the Thunderbirds, Tanya Obst just making um, Pop Gita be, I guess, make Courtney Bruce accountable. Courtney's coming up quite high and looking to pick off some balls, so making sure that she's still staying in the circle to make Courtney have to guess. Making sure as well that um, her centre cores are really driving the ball nice and strong. It's quite interesting seeing the body language of the Thunderbirds. Some players are up and about, some already look defeated. So this next six minutes, um, whether or not they're going to be able to pull this back will be an interesting one. Well, that's big turnover and the Thunderbirds quickly with Potgita. It's back to seven. They have the next centre pass. Maybe the momentum just with the team in pink. Fired forward by Nankovell to Potgita, returns it to Nankovell. Inside the final six. Contact from Wilson, it's the Fever's ball. As they look to retreat. Ariang Simmons. Dan Ryan for the Fever was very clear in his messaging. In that timeout, in saying our intent is absolutely everything. The willingness to take the extra pass, take the extra lead, and look at opportunities for defensively. So he's well aware that they need to close out this game and how important that is leading into finals. Over here. So contact called on Shamira Sterling. She could do this in a sleep. Janiel Fowler. Back out to nine. They have the centre pass. They just have to go for two point shots now. Potkita. You're so right, Ben. There's four, just over four minutes to go in this game. This is the game sense part, the component that comes into individual players and teams. Just like that Suncorp super shot by Georgie Horges. They need to take these risks. This is the final game of their season. So another $100 to the Confident Girls Foundation. Of course, 100 for every super shot sunk this season. So can Georgie Horges provide another special moment here? Bruce got a touch, so it will be the Thunderbirds throw in. Well, Horchus is going to have to be the hero here. There's no other option. Contact from Bruce on Pot Gita. And this is where the defensive side of the Suncorp Super Shot comes in. If you have a team like Thunderbirds where you know Georgie Horgis wants the ball, have a look at Stacey Francis. She's one on one because she knows that that's a player that wants to catch the two point, the ball in the two point zone. So just a chance to get a breath. Here we go. 
just over three minutes remaining. He sends all it'll take. His one more Suncorp super shot from Sasha Glasgow. And the fever almost there. She's happy to find Fowler. Anna Petty on the stretch, feeding Horges. Well, Francis Bayman read the pass. And contact called against Ariang. Nankavell just wanting the court to be mopped. That's the kind of heat that's in this match. So will it be another season of no finals for the Adelaide Thunderbirds? One goal is just not going to do it for them at the moment with seven to catch up now. Goal for goal, the last five. Make it six. Teague Neal, Glasgow. Fowler again. So it's looking as though it will be three consecutive seasons for the Thunderbirds with five wins. They haven't been able to edge their way to six. And this was a season that everyone was so excited about. In pre-season, they looked the goods. Suncorp super shot drains for Horges, so it's back to six. They need a turnover. If they ever needed one this season, it is right now for Adelaide. A slip from Sterling. And Fowler takes full advantage. So don't forget, straight after this one, the Swifts and the Firebirds for a spot in the top four. Glasgow dominating the super shot count today. How about that from Francis Bayman? And pinched back by Petty. What a pick up from Hannah Petty. And then given away. Well, and that's where it comes into, Ben. It's just that placement and decision making that lets them down in crucial moments. And Petty again getting herself about. Almost a tackle there on Stacey Francis Bayman. Well, they will have learned a lot from this season, the Adelaide Thunderbirds. So it's sitting sixth on the table. Last season they finished seventh. The last time they finished higher than sixth on the table, or in sixth or higher, was back in 2013. And this team is a team to be excited about. They'll learn so much from this season and certainly were in this competition. It's just fixing up those, you know, really simple mistakes and converting off their game. And next year, they will be a side that will contest not only for finals, but that premiership. Well, they're just getting more experience, aren't they, the Thunderbirds? And no doubt this will help this season. Fowler. And you look at the matches played in the National League. The Fever today, 814. The Thunderbirds, 399 coming into this one. That's the difference in experience, and that will only help for the Thunderbirds. Wilson, Nankavell, and Sterling at the back. Here is Shamira Sterling. Bullets the pass, and a replay call goes against Horges. So their season coming to an end. The Adelaide Thunderbirds, can they finish on a high? Glasgow! with a Suncorp super shot to finish. Hasn't she been good today? The confidence out of her little quiet start, but really confident as Sterling comes up with a great intercept to finish off the match. So the Fever tune up for the finals in style. They are now just one win away from a grand final here in Perth. Janelle Fowler, she had a work cut out for her in the first half. But in the second, she was as strong as ever, ensuring the Fever make it back-to-back -back wins to finish the season. They win in the West, 68 to 57.